I think we went a little heavy on the shimmery eyeshadow. A bit overzealous, a little over shimmered. I'm just a fairy. Kim here, welcome back. May is here, spring, summer's approaching, blah blah blah. The sweating season is almost here. Well, since it's a new month, of course, I'm gonna tell you everything I read in the previous month. That's the what it is. That's what you do on the YouTube. So yeah, okay, I read for five-ish, five-ish books in April, and I really actually kind of sort of loved them all. So that is super duper. Quick disclaimer, if you have not seen the video on how I rate books, you may want to consider checking that out. I'll link it in the description and probably right there because um, I don't like stars and I just say weird numbers about things that you're not going to know what they mean unless you see that video, but if you don't care, like, that's fine. Okay, the first book I wrote in April, Watch Over Me by Jennifer Lee. This was a novella that I was sent for review, and it was so lovely, so lovely. It follows the story of a woman named Brenda, she's a single mom, dealing with single mom stuff. Very attractive man moves in her apartment building, and the story goes from there. It is a lovely healing story where she kind of like goes on this, this healing journey that, that love guides her on. And it's really sweet and really nice. It's a clean romance, which is nice sometimes. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of like appreciate that a lot of times. And I really liked it. I gave this a rating of 14 out of 20. It was just was a nice, short, lovely read. I did a full review for this right there. And down there. Next! The King of Average by Gary Schwartz. This was the other book I was sent for review this month. It's a middle grade novel about a boy named James who comes from a broken home, his mom is like really not at all nice to him, it's very sad, and he doesn't do awesome in school, and he just is, you know, a struggling kid, and he decides that his greatest aspiration is to be the king of average. And as soon as he makes this decision, this goat with a, a sweater vest shows up, takes him to another world where James is to become the literal ruler of a land called Average. Hijinks ensue, adventure, quests, you get it. I really liked it. It was really fun. I really got like a phantom toll booth kind of vibe from it. I ended up rating The King of Average a 14 out of 20. I also did a full review on this book that you can find right there and right there. Next, Vlog Like a Boss by Amy Schmidauer. If you have not heard me talk about the lovely Amy Schmidauer, where have you been? I love her YouTube channel. She's so cool. She gives you so much like incredibly valuable information for um, branding and running a YouTube channel and like vlogging and things like that and she just is just a wealth of knowledge and I love her. I decided to buy her book for two reasons. Number one, I can always learn more about being on YouTube. I love the platform, I love what I'm doing here and I just want to be like the best that I can be at it and so I thought this is definitely not going to hurt me um, and I, I trust her, like she's trusted, like you know what I mean, with, with knowledge and things like that and so I wanted to, to just learn as much as I can from her. Second, she, as far as I know, actually indie published this book. Hi, I'm an indie writer. That's awesome. So I need to like support people in my community. And that's the thing. We as indie writers are in the same community. That basically really does just mean that we're friends. So like Amy is my, like we're friends, okay? Like we're buds because we're in the same community and that means that you are friends because we're good friends. That may have sounded a little creepy. I really liked this book. Rating this one a 14 out of 20. It's kind of funny because I had to rework my uh, book rating system because it is specifically for fiction books and I don't have a book rating system for non-fiction books because I really don't read that many, which is shameful. So I had to kind of tweak things around and, and, and because like characters and story, like they don't matter <laughs> because there isn't characters and things like that. I just kind of rated it based on um, the, the value I got from it and the um, attention that it kept and kind of how it had me, left me feeling afterwards like motivated, inspired, and like blah blah blah. And I'll probably end up doing a non-fiction rating system video in the future should I start reading more, which I really should start reading more non-fiction books because they are just really good for your brain. Highly recommend it if you are looking at um, like YouTube stuff more than just like a hobby. Like if you are really trying to be successful at it, this is something you're gonna wanna consider. And her channel, seriously, I'm, guys, I'm so serious. You need to go, yeah. Next! 
Weasel and Poe by Lauren Oliver. Ooh, man, this book, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. God, this book is a treasure. This is so many things about this book that's just, I just love it so much. This is a story about a girl named Liesel who is locked in an attic and she becomes friends with a ghost. It's also about a boy who misplaces a box of very, very important magic. Um, it has a lot of characters whose stories intertwine, and I was actually kind of nervous when I started this book because there were so many sort of storylines happening that I was like, this is going to get overwhelming, especially for like middle grade. Like, how is this going to work? And I'm not kidding you guys, it flowed perfectly. Like, it was just it beautifully blended and, and the way everything intertwined and everything and just it was fun and it was beautiful and lovely and just a great story and so Oh, so wonderful. I ended up rating this as 17 out of 20. Next! Fable Haven by Brandon Mull. Okay, this has been on my radar for a while and I really, really liked it. I had a lot of fairies. God, like, come on, if a book has fairies, like, I'm gonna love it. That's kind of all it takes. This is a middle grade novel about um, two kids that end up at their grandparents' house who are kind of mysterious. Like, they don't really know that much about their grandparents, they don't see them often and things like that. And it turns out that that's because they're grandparents run a sanctuary for magical creatures like fairies and trolls and all kinds of things both good and bad so there's like this cool adventure aspect so much middle grade fun and magic and wonderfulness to it I ended up rating it a 16 out of 20 it was really exciting and I really liked it I will definitely be continuing the series however oh this is so important I will not be buying this cover version because this is gonna be a mini rant and I'm gonna try to be cool about it, but it really, really infuriates me. And it's not the author's fault, it is the publisher's fault, and uh, here's the cover. And on the back, it shows the other covers for the remaining books in the series. This cover and three others feature Seth, the brother, on the cover. I haven't read the other books, so I can't speak for them, but this book is mainly told from the perspective of Kendra, the sister. The story is told from the point of view of a girl, but the boy is on the cover for three out of five books. Do I need to tell you why that's a problem? Do I need to say that there is a problem culturally? I'm just gonna leave you with the deep sighs and the angry eyes about this because I really don't want this to be a 10 year video about the problem. <sighs> but I will be continuing the series. I'm just gonna buy the other covers with the mystical, magical creatures on them because they're kind of prettier and they're less sexist. Those are all the books that I read in the month of April. I had a great reading month. I loved them all. I'm really excited to continue on the middle grade reading. I did really well with the TBR stuff. I think better than usual. Yay. I don't think I'm going to do a TBR video for um, May though because I don't really know what I'm going to be reading. We're going to mood read in May because I can. Consider subscribing to this YouTube channel if you haven't already. If you're new here, it's a place on the internet that is not as bad as other places. Thanks so much for watching, happy reading, and we'll see you next time.